Among those fleeing are journalists after Russia blocked its last independent TV channel, TV Rain, and the network made the decision to shut down. Several of its leaders fled the country in fear for their safety. For the station's final broadcast today, those staffers remaining in the studio gathered for a farewell at the anchor desk. While others waved goodbye over Zoom, the broadcast included an emotional farewell from TV Rain's editor-in-chief who told his colleagues, quote, we are on the right side of history. This is TV Rain's editor-in-chief just a week ago, interviewing top American State Department official Victoria Nuland on his network. Now that network, that network bringing information to people inside of Russia is shut down. And he has been forced to flee Russia for his safety. Joining us now is Tikhan Zedako, editor-in-chief of TV Rain, Russia's last independent TV station. Mr. Zetko, thank you so much for joining us and being here with us, especially Thanks. under Thanks these difficult, uh, difficult circumstances and conditions. Um, I, I know that you and your colleagues at TV Rain uh, have left Russia because you felt that staying there posed a personal safety risk for you, your teams, your families. We know that the Kremlin has severely restricted media freedom in Russia this week, but have there been specific threats made against you and your colleagues uh, at TV Rain that you can tell us about? Well, yes, uh, that's correct. Uh, three days ago, me and the two of my colleagues, we started to receive uh, threats uh, in uh, texts on uh, our phones and uh, in the messages in uh, social media. Uh, this is something which have been happening um, all the years when your phone number is published somewhere and usually you don't pay a lot of attention to it because it's some part of a, you know information war i would say but now in these circumstances it is completely different uh, in this atmosphere you start to to think differently about it so yeah i i, I consider these texts pretty serious can you describe, I mean, you described the text and the threats and how you're taking them serious, but can you just tell us about the last week in terms of working as a journalist in Russia? Can you describe for us the kind of environment that you and your team were working in specifically after Putin launched this war against Ukraine? Well, on well, last Thursday, the world changed. I, uh, I, was, I was heading to, to the office uh, because I... Uh, I, uh, I I had a uh, I had a show in the morning, but on my way to the to the uh, TV station in the cab, my producer called me and uh, t and told me that Vladimir Putin announced that uh, he started a war. So everything changed after it. We we changed our uh, normal uh, programming. So we we we, we became uh, almost non-stop uh, non-stop. Uh, uh, on air shows and we've been working 24 to 7 as normal journalists we had journalists in, uh, in ukraine we we were talking to them we were talking to politicians in uh, russia in ukraine in in the west etc etc but then the situation started to to change first there was this huge problem with the military uh, censorship in Russia. It, it, it is a very interesting situation. Russian government does not admit that there is a war. Russian government even uh, uh, forbids to use the word uh, to use the word war. Uh, it says to use words special military operation. But at the same time, there is no war, but there is a military of censorship. Uh, so first, we, I mean, to rain and some other medias, we get a warning from a Russian government that we have to use only official information from the Ministry of Defense. And of course, it's it's impossible. Right. If you use only this information, you you became uh, you you become the part of the state propaganda. And uh, in uh, several days after it, our website was was blocked. And uh, website, as you mentioned, the website of the Hamaskui and some other medias. Just two days ago, two, just two hours ago, uh, the website of Meduza, it is a very popular independent website, was blocked as well. Yeah. And I think, uh, and, 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 I, and I saw that Facebook is blocked as well in Moscow. So 
it, as you mentioned, it is a huge and the strongest crackdown on independent uh, media and the independent mind in Russia. It's pretty terrible. It is terrible, and it is frightening to see this information blackout being imposed. I just want to ask you really quickly, if I can, your final thoughts, because as I understood sure. it in your remarks to your staff, you said that no matter how bad things get and how many people might be pleased to see your station stop broadcasting, your channel will still win. How? How will you win? What does victory look like for you? Well, if you maybe you saw that uh, uh, in Russia, uh, we uh, we saw the numbers that uh, 62 percent of uh, Russian citizens support the war. I I do not trust these numbers, and I know that these numbers are are uh, are false. This is not true. I know that. Uh, not a lot of people in Russia support the war, and I know that uh, even in the uh, in the government, not a lot of people support the war, uh, which tells me that somehow one day the situation will end. Somehow one day Russia will become a normal country because the majority of Russians want to live in a normal, civilized country, and uh, civilized country means that it has normal media mm. such as TV rain. So I am completely sure that Russian people, they have requests to normal life and they will finally, one day they will get it. I have made this point time and time again. The Russian people are not the Russian government. They are not Vladimir Putin, Tikhon, Zetko, editor-in-chief of, of TV rain. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Russia's last independent TV channel. Greatly appreciate your time and your insights. Stay safe, please.